I love Day Nine. Day Nine of drinking mostly poor. Day Nine of loving poor. Trying to. We're here. Day Nine. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going, friends? Steven, welcome. I love the assistant to the side. Uh, Jeremy, who is uh, our, um, I don't know what you call you. You're just a national treasure. 23? 23 huh. pours now? How many How many pours have you drunk during this whole challenge? Um, 23 Axolotl is here. Uh, Rocky Mountain Raider. Dude, Peter, how's it going? I'm so excited. We're drinking the water that we're formulating because you taught me how to formulate water or told me how to go after that. So it's so nice to see you. I hope you guys are okay in Colorado. Um, Eric is here. T. Sleuth. Um, uh, J-U-I-I. Joy. And uh, Proud Transband is here, and then Leaves in Hot Water. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are doing some more coerce study. Today is going to be a little bit more kind of like, you know, back to the kind of side-by-side -side kind of study that I like to do. We're going to be comparing grades of show puer today from what we call gongting to teji to kind of like more standard. And I want to preface this video by saying that Poor Love Challenge was created because I am not a poor expert. I'm not a you know I'm not a master of any tea at all. But especially poor, I'm a little bit you know needing some catching up in poor. So anything that we talk about in this video, in any video at all whatsoever, make sure that you're doing your own research and also following up with both what you're studying and what you're tasting based on what I'm saying. But today. You know, like I've never done this side by side before. So this is my first time tasting these three grades of pour side by side. I've had these teas before. I know what they taste like, but there's something potent about having teas together that helps you taste the differences better. Because tea is very subtle, you know, it's very low key. It, it takes a little bit more focus and contrast to see the differences, I think. So that's why we're doing this like, like this today. Like with any Side by side that I like to do, we're going to do the bowl brewing method. So we're going to drop the same amount of tea into each bowl after we preheat them because we can't skip that, right? Like that's the basics. We're going to preheat these bowls and then we're going to taste them in the bowls as well. The reason why we don't use a pot is because I don't have three identical pots to put these pours in. But um, by doing the bowl brewing method, might be a review for a lot of you. We're eliminating a lot of the kind of less predictable factors, like the way I pour in into the pot and out of the pot, the way the pot affects the tea. This way, using the three identical bowls, we're just looking at what the teas are doing, more or less. So, sounds good? Yeah? Yeah, I think we're good. All right, so who else has jumped in in the last couple? Uh, Gabby's here, who's probably the poor queen right now, alongside Jeremy. You guys can rule your kingdom together. <laughs> Amy is here. How's it going, Amy? Um, Jocelyn is here. Uh, Fantastic Claire is here. And Misa Yen is here, as well as Poor World. Welcome, Poor World, to our Poor World. Yeah, it's been a world of poor for us recently. And uh, what Steven and I have noticed is that I think poor is easier to drink when you're drinking just poor, it just seems to have a different kind of rhythm to any other tea for me. Like I can switch from an oolong to a white tea to a green tea pretty easily, but poor seems to have, yeah, it just seems to have its own thing going on. I don't know what's going on there. Like it's difficult for me to switch from a poor to a white tea or from an oolong to a poor. But once I've started drinking poor, I'm like, another poor, another, another poor, another. So. Yeah, re recently I've been drinking a lot more of it. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Da, 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 da. We gotta weigh out these babies just to make sure they're the same number of grams in each bowl. I don't have a scale that's... Maybe, maybe the one from Christine? I don't know. I'm not sure if this one will take the bowls because you can also weigh out the water. So the amount is the same, but I don't know if this scale will take the bowl. Let's see. Um, yeah, it will actually. So we'll be able to measure out the amount of water in all of those. And we will first weigh out the leaves. So let's do that. Um, Gabby says, can you get a Discord tag for that, please? Gabby, we'll see. Because at the end of the green tea drink down, we actually like chose people who did the most of a certain thing and stuff like that. But 
Maybe we'll award a Discord tag to the person with the most core consumed. But then we might get sued because we might find someone on the news, you know, Quebecois man, you know, <laughs> dies of poor overdose. <laughs> I hope it's not you, Jeremy. I really sincerely hope it's not you. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. What are you guys drinking today? As usual, I hope it's poor. Um, I haven't had poor today yet, actually. We had just com come off the tail end of Floating Leaves' uh, Instagram Live, which we always tune in for. Sherwood and Noah are just incredible. They're just... They're just crazy. I don't think words can express how much they've done for us and what we learned about tea. So if you don't already follow their live streams, you definitely should. Um, yeah, so we're kind of cheating on the poor love, you know, listening to Sean and Noah talk about Oolong, but that's okay. Right, Steven? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's all right. Um, but yeah, this will be my first poor today. I'm actually only on poor number two out of seven. I think I might log the... Um, I might log the Space Girls from yesterday's session with Glenn because I did kind of follow up on it afterwards. During our Discord hangout, I've drunk the tea a couple times now this challenge. Yeah, so maybe I'm at like 3 out of 7. So for those of you who are still kind of like not at 7 out of 7 yet, not at 24 out of 7, don't worry! You guys got some time. Don't worry. You guys got some time to finish your 7 out of 7 before April 15. That's next Wednesday. Then we have one more Discord hangout on that day. So if you want to just chug poor for a couple hours with us, you know, you could do that too. Okay, I'm almost done, I promise. Almost done. 193, 196. Okay, perfect. Boop. All right, so what is on the table right now? We've got... Gosh. <laughs> We've got Gong Ting, which is the highest grade on the table. It's a grade of pour that's mostly the buds. For those of you who've had Gong Ting before, this one looks extremely budsy. And this is a little bit different from your typical Gong Ting. Um, Gong Ting is spelled G-O-N-G-T-I-N-G. Usually the buds are a lot smaller than this, right? But this is a little bit different. This was a Gong Ting made using like larger bud material. Um, it's from a producer who usually uses this material for black tea, but they used it for to make this this pour now. So it is, you know, um, large old trees and stuff like that. But basically, what Gong Ting is is pour material that's mostly the buds, and you can see it pretty well in the show pour because it tends to be more golden. And then let's contrast this guy with this guy over here, which also is kind of golden. You know, you can kind of see the yellowish tint going on. Gong Ting is the highest grade that I know of. And then this second grade is right beside it. Taji, right behind it, I mean. So it's a step lower. It's slightly less buds. So that's going to change the flavor that you get in the tea. And that's not to say that the highest grade will be the best tasting tea, of course. N nowhere in any tea land whatsoever should you assume that high grade equals better tea. But it just depends on your personal preference. I personally don't prefer a lot of the Gong Ting show pours. They tend to be a little bit too kind of buzzy, a little bit too complex. If, you know, just, just, it, it just gets a little bit too much for me. But we'll see if I like this one today. The reason why that happens is, again, with the leaf material we've been talking about for the past couple weeks, um, on and off. The buds have the most kind of material, most potency, most complexity. They've got all the caffeine in there. They just have the highest concentration of all like the really interesting dancey stuff that you get in, in tea because it's the youngest bud. As you move lower down the leaf, the kind of diversity and amount of tea compounds is going to be less as you go down. So that's why we call it lower grade. It's also going to be cheaper. So this stuff is the most expensive, the Gong Ting. The Taji is going to be second most expensive. And then the last grade we'll do today is I took this from a cake of 7562. It's a really famous Hmong Hai Dai cake. Um, even for those of you who don't drink poor, but especially for those of you who do drink poor, Hmong Hai Dai is a really, you know, really common name. It's kind of like the target of 
for, but in a good way. Like, everyone knows them, their tea is everywhere, but it's pretty good. Like, it's not like a Walmart, you know? <laughs> pretty solid. So, this is the 7562 material from that cake. And I would say, you know, I'm just gonna call this a standard pour that we're drinking today. It's a very, like, solid down the middle cake nothing extremely fancy but really really solid so that's the 7562 there from what i understand the first two letters i mean the first two numbers of a pour cake are like the year that the formula was developed someone better fact check me on that and then the third is the grade of the tea right so 7562 so this is grade six Okay, so much lower than these two, which are even above the numbered scale for, for, uh, for blended teas. Um, and then, as always, I've seen side-by-sides of grades just visually that someone will call this Taji, and then someone else will call something else Taji, even if they look different. It's important to remember that the people grading these teas are humans, just like us. They're not superhumans, they're not supercomputers, they definitely know more about poor than I do but they still are using relatively subjective terms to determine what, you know, what the grade is going to be. The same thing happens with, um, like, Darjeeling teas and super fine tippy golden orange peco and super fine tippy orange golden peco one. <laughs> I've literally seen them, like, a super tippy fine an STFGOP one and an STFGOP of the same grade, and they look completely different, taste completely different. To be fair, the grading systems in China are a lot more consistent than in India, just from what I've seen. But just remember, you know, we can't use these as a, like, T is not mathematical. The best way to think about this is gonna be like a spectrum. More buds, less buds. More expensive, less expensive. More kind of punchy, complex, but also full. but. A little bit more flavor forward and then a little bit different you know we'll see how it goes again this is my first time setting up this side by side so i'm really excited to figure out how they taste different yeah i've had these teas before on their own but side by sides are super potent you'll realize things that are different about them that you really won't realize or catch on to unless you're doing a side by side i promise even if you've said you know i've had gongting pu'er before i've had Taji Pu'er before I've had that Daiyi cake before, do a side-by-side. -side. It's gonna teach you some stuff. It's gonna teach me some stuff today, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Um, Leo from Ruby Lion is here. How's it going, my friend? Felix is here. Um, Agnieszka Tea Lover is here. Writing in Tea. How's it going? Delphine and Ico de Trav. Good afternoon from Vegas. Not very often in the last couple, you know, that I've done like a side by side that's pretty new. So I'm like, that like new experiment energy. There's a term called new relationship energy, NRE. Steven, we're gonna run out of that soon. Don't worry. I'm just kidding. Oh my God, I made him look so sad. <laughs> new experiment energy. So I'm like extra excited because I'm like, I've never done this side by side before. I'm stoked. It's, it, I'm just trying to show you that I really haven't studied poor that much. I really haven't, you know? Um, after yesterday's live, there were a couple other things I had to ask Glenn, like, hey, I forgot to ask about this thing. And then, can you can you help us clear up what that one term was? And I almost feel bad I bothered him, you know, just asking too much stuff. But he's very patient with me, so I'm very lucky. <laughs> okay, Christine Scale. This is borrowed from my friend Christine. Don't tell her. Um, I think her scale will handle the water, so yeah. We will make sure not to overload the scale, because some scales are more sensitive than others. My scale is nice, it just can't handle the big bowls. This one can. So we're doing 90... what, what degrees are we at? We're at 97 degrees Celsius today. And we're going to tear the sky. And we'll do, it's like 150 grams of water. So 150 grams of water is the same as 150 ml of water. And you can weigh your bowl on a scale that can handle the weight, because some scales can't, so this one can. 
And I'm going to wait until the weight now is 150 ml, 100, 150 grams. There we go, good. Now there is a, um, a weakness here, which is that if you notice, I'm pouring back and forth. So that's kind of changing the way I'm pouring into the leaves, but sometimes I just don't weigh. So I guess we'll just mix it up. As long as you're aware of the imperfections in your experiment, I think it's okay for your experiment not to be, you know, completely and totally perfect. We're not in a tea lab. Can someday, can we get a tea lab someday? I just want to spend my whole day like doing tea experiments. That would be amazing. Ah, dreams. This is our tea lab here. I don't have to be, I don't have to pine for something else. I'm happy in this room. I'm very happy. I saw um, someone was drinking shagwan. Was that you, Amy? I think it was Amy who was drinking shagwan. Yeah. 1998 Xiaoguan. Amy, be careful. We might lose you during the stream like last time. <laughs> I saw your post on Poor Love 2020. Um, I haven't been able to just repost and share all the really, really cool posts everyone's been making on Instagram. Um, I've been too busy stressing out over those interviews we're doing. Um, tomorrow we have one more. Uh, we have my friend Nan Nan who's from Jojo Tea, who grew up in Yunnan and formerly studied Pu'er there. And I picked her because, well, she's amazing, incredible. And we had a conversation about like Pu'er dudes <laughs> and she's a girl. And I just wanted to get that kind of different perspective. Uh, a lot of our information is from people who didn't grow up in that part of the world. Even if it's someone from China, if you grow up in Shanghai versus growing up in Yunnan, the experience is very different. And there's nothing inherently wrong with a Western perspective in tea. Don't get me wrong. I know I kind of like to rag on it a bit. It's just that we need to expand a little bit more. And in learning a little bit about Chinese tea culture in Taiwan and Chinese tea culture in the southeast part um, in, in Wuyishan, where I visited, I haven't visited Yunnan, the way that they think about tea, the cultural connotations and the historical connotations are so deep. I'm like, oh my god, I wish I could understand more about it because there's a lot of unsaid things or maybe just unexplained things that we don't know about because we're just not, we just haven't been exposed to it, you know? I haven't preheated these cold tea police. Okay, we will save ourselves. Um, so that's why we're having our own tomorrow and I'm really interested to see what it was like to to formally learn about Pu'er because maybe they did talk about these grades when they were, you know, studying and I wonder what it is that they emphasize because we tend to emphasize very different things in the West than they do in Taiwan, in China, in Japan, where the tea is from. So it's going to be awesome. And then after that, Saturday, we have the incredible Jeffrey McIntosh on for an interview, which is insane. That guy has changed my Pu'er life a lot and I can't wait to share the interview with you guys and then I think yeah I'll, I'll leave it off from there those two those two interviews we have two more after that I need to confirm the times and dates on those but it's a lot of poor learning and I'm really really grateful for that yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the Crimson Lotus interview yesterday Glenn is really really cool we both wish that you know it could go longer but He's a family guy. I don't want to take him away from his kids too much. <laughs> He's pretty awesome. Just imagine, like, for however long you've been drinking Pu'er, <clears throat> he and his wife have been working with Pu'er every single day since 2013. Have you worked with something every single day since 2013? Stephen wasn't even born yet. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Stephen. Stephen's a year younger than me. I so. saw that setup from a while away. <laughs> did you did you see that setup from a while away? Yeah, so it's just when you when you access these incredible like minds, incredible tea experiences, it's just just <laughs> And oh you know, like I'm a little bit I'm always starstruck by my own friends, you know, but because I'm like, wow, you just know so much about that one thing. But all y'all too, every single person has a perspective to share that honestly changes my perspective about tea on a day-to-day -day basis. So really, you're here not to listen to me. You're here because I want to download all the information and perspectives from you. 
Waka, 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 waka. So, yeah. Um, Clara says that Walmart is fishy poor. I agree. Um, 23 asks Lalo right underneath says, Fishy poor? Question mark? You weren't here for the, the sticky rice poor experiment we did the other day then because that was... We went fishing that day, didn't we, guys? <laughs> Ian is here calling us poor weirdos. What is up with that? Uh, Mr. Luck Jerry is here. Teen Whisk is here. Um, Ian's also having Xiaoguan. He's asking who's a Xiaoguan expert. That's like a whole sub scene, and I have minimal info and understanding. Maybe one of these people who are bringing it on in the next couple days can answer some questions for you. I'm sure Jeffrey knows about Xiaoguan. I mean, Jeffrey has done a lot of poor consulting and sourcing and buying, selling. He's a lot of information. So I think of the people who are coming on, probably either Nan Nan tomorrow or Jeffrey on Saturday are going to be kind of in the know about Xiaoguan. So hold on to those questions. I am certainly not a Xiaoguan expert. Um, I'm an expert at avoiding Xiaoguan because Xiaoguan and me... I don't know. I dig it, but I can have like one or two cups and then I run away as fast as I can. <laughs> of the biggest, you know, of, of the bigger tea factories, I think Menghai Dai is my favorite. It's the most standard, it's the most kind of mellow. It's not the most interesting, but I like it a lot. Shrek one's okay, don't get me wrong. It's not like I don't like those teas. It's just, man, they're like, yeah. <laughs> they're punchy, aren't they guys? Yeah. So for those of you who are joining us, again, we've set up our experiments. Two grams each of a Gongting Puar, a Taji Puar, and a Grade 6 Puar from uh, Manghai Dai. These guys are just different grades of Puar based on the shape, I mean, the size of the leaf, the leaf material. I and mean, it's not so much about the size because this guy here is buds only. So a lot of the gongting on the market is from the smaller buds, like really, really tiny tips um, from what I've seen. But these guys are a little bit bigger. I'm going to call them gongting anyway. Um, so mostly buds, a lower percentage of buds, and then an even lower percentage of buds. So more buds, less buds, even less. So less leaves, more leaves, even more leaves, like lower down, lower down the, lower down the, uh, the tree. And those taste different. I can t tell you again why they taste different, but my perspective is very much from Taiwan. So I'm interested to see how these are gonna taste and, and smell and yeah, I'm excited. I will be looking down at these a lot, so if I ignore you by accident, don't worry. I'm thinking about you. I'm just really excited because I've never done this side by side before. Neither has Steven, because I don't teach poor workshops, that's why. So I'm like, I don't teach about stuff I don't know about. Um, so this is very much a learning experience with me too. I wish you guys could be here. I mean, look how, it's all, it's all warm for us and stuff. We could get, take like tea baths together. Okay, so let's, let's smell this. I'm gonna show you how we evaluate tea on the tea farms, you know? You take your bowl, smell it. They usually smell the tea first allowing it to cool. There's almost no smell coming off of that. Is it just me, Steven? Wow. Steven, smell this. Imaginary Steven. He has a he has a hand. Show your hand. No? He doesn't have a hand. I'll show him my hand. <laughs> just to prove to Claire that you're real. Um, Ian from Dottitron says Shiaguan is a fucked up dude. It's 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 pretty intense. Do you smell anything from that? You do? Yeah. I don't smell much from that. What does it smell like to you? Smoky. I, I can barely detect that. I wonder if that's like a weakness in my, 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 I can barely smell anything from that. Is it strong? No? no. So it's very, very light. Steven says it's smoky. I can barely smell anything. I can get the smokiness actually. Now that Steven points it out, and a tiny <laughs> bit of sweetness, but it, just, it, it, it wasn't looking, it wasn't what I was looking for. So I don't know if it is psychosomatic, because Steven said smoky. I'm like, smoky. Remember that tasting notes can be very, you know, suggestive. And it's not to say they're wrong, but sometimes you're like, yeah, that's what I taste. Because someone told you. <laughs> it does smell sort of smoky. But it's not smoky like a lap sang chong. I'm having a difficult time trying to pull notes out of that. That's really interesting. 
See, that smells like puerra. That smells like... It smells like fruit. It smells like earth. Very nice. I like that smell a lot. Look how much darker this guy is compared to the other one. This one here is a little bit more orange toned, you know? This one here is a little bit darker. Steven, smell this. And we were taught how to do competition style evaluation at the Taiwanese Research Extension Station in Taiwan, in Pinglin. I'm trying really hard not to be like, oh my god, it was my dream for so many years to go to TRES. Those are the guys who develop the cultivars, like Jin Xuan is from those guys, Ruby18 was from those guys. They made those cultivars, like they crossed them and like developed them and then propagated them out literally and figuratively to the market. So I was having, I was like really, really happy. Um, I really like cultivars and all that stuff. And they taught us how to evaluate something competition style in Taiwan. They actually let the tea cool down, which is interesting. I'm really surprised by that. Um, it's so that something that's really, really hot, you know, will taste a little bit different from something that's cooled down even just a couple minutes later. So by getting all of them to room temperature, you're giving them all a more fair evaluation. I don't like the taste of tea that's been cooled down as much as hot tea, so I won't do that today. I'll let them cool down later and I'll try them again, but we will try them hot. That one's got the strongest smell, that's for sure. More earthy. So, barely anything, Steven says smoky. Fruity, earthy, and then earthy. And this is buds, less buds, least buds. Not very many leaves at all. Some leaves, more leaves. More expensive, less expensive, least expensive. Just overall. And of course, where the brand that's pressing the cake and you know the year the storage style will change the way these all cost in the market but let's say the same person same factory just everything the same but you're only changing the grades this is going to be the most expensive one the buds they just you know you, you need more of them to make the same amount of tea and it's almost like, if you think about it, if you let the buds grow just a couple weeks later, you'll get more material, you'll get more money. So it requires them to make this more expensive because you're kind of missing out on how much weight you could have gotten from the buds if you just let them grow into leaves, you know? So that's why they do that there. And then this is the lightest in color. This is, uh, they're about the same, these two. I'd even say this one's darker. That's interesting. Um... And then these are all about the same age too, 2010, 2011, 2010, 2011, yeah, so let's, let's drink them. That's very mild. Is that even poor? Holy crap. Steven, why don't, what, I can't get much from that. That's really interesting. It's very creamy though. Wow. wow, okay, now it's like doing stuff. It's like starting to do stuff in here. It's very soft, isn't it? No? Non? Non? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that up front, I'm surprised by how soft and smooth that is because actually a lot of Gongting Puer I've had is very punchy. That's very soft and very creamy. Wow. And I say a lot of Gong Ting Poor, like the three I've ever had, have been very punchy. And actually that is very punchy in the sense that I now can't feel my face. That I just immediately feel it in my cheeks. Oh, the buds do have the most caffeine and all that other good stuff. So just tendencies, right? Wow. My face already. Oh, okay. Um, Hidestrock is talking about um, asking us what's in our cups. There are three grades of show puer, a gongting, teji, which is T-E-J-I. So first grade, uh, the highest grade gongting, the second highest grade teji, and then a more standard one. There are other grades in between these two here. 
But I just want to jump to this one. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Clara says, getting into tea and meeting people is so surreal. I'm so starstruck by Shiloh. Shiloh is amazing. I'm so starstruck by him. Every single time I'm like, oh, Shiloh knows so much about tea. <laughs> I really enjoyed his uh, Gong Fu Cha um, ex- demonstration earlier. Um, Ian from Donnie Chan, it's a strange mistress and I don't exactly understand how I developed such an affinity for it. You're talking about Xia Guan? What? You've, uh, you've sunk into the Xiaoguan, Xiaoguan hole. <sighs> People I know who've done Xiaoguan never heard from them again. <laughs> so that's very, wow, that's very mild in terms of flavor, but it's very punchy in terms of how it feels. Yeah, I just lost feeling on my face after I ate, after I drank that. It feels like you're eating something. It's just so full. It's pretty strange. Yeah. Second one. Wow, that's a huge difference in taste. Massive difference in taste. Holy crap. Wow. There's almost no earthiness in this at all whatsoever. Um, The earthiness that I get is very clean. It's very light. It's very understated. Um, This here, wow, it just suddenly tastes like puer. So you kind of get some of that sweetness and brightness and kind of finesse you get from this here, but then you make it earthy. So you take this and then you bury it and that's what you get here. (laughs) Tastes very different, Stephen. Try it. Try it! Yeah, and then it feels different too. It it feels a little bit more grounding and less like I'm melting my face. Fascinating stuff. Anyone else tried, you know, gongting puer or teji puer? It's not all the time that these cakes come labeled. Usually the higher quality, the leaf material, the more the vendor or the factory will tell you. So, you know, if something's old tree, there's almost no way you'll find a a cake that's old tree without the vendor trying to tell you it's old tree. (laughs) But you'll find cakes that are, you know, like grade six, like this one that the vendor will tell you about it. It's not as important because it's not really a marketing point how what grade that tea is. But if something is gongting or teji, you'll probably hear about it, especially gongting. G-O-N-G-T-I-N-G. And yeah, this is a little bit different from the ones I've had in the past. The buds are a little bit bigger. I don't know if that's changing how the tea is tasting. It's got a lot going on. It's very difficult to express what this tea is doing. It's, it's simultaneously very light and yet very, very complex. Just think about a silver needle. This is like the silver needle of Chopuer. Um, just in terms of the profile or the, the leaf material, it's buds, right? Buds are pretty deceiving. They don't taste like much. And then later on you're like, wow, you know, a silver needle. <laughs> and if you boil them, a lot of that kind of packed in flavor comes out. So I even wonder if these buds are still opening up a little bit because buds take longer than these cut up leaves to open up and release their flavor. Yeah. So I'll wait for that. I'm interested to see where that goes. This is definitely a little bit more simple, a little bit more friendly. Um, That's a mystery to me. Sweet. Ooh, almost like chocolate. I'm I'm getting some like chocolate taste in there. Mm, nom 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 nom. Steven, did you get chocolate from that? Not really. No? I think maybe it's cooling down. It's like earthy chocolate. Like cocoa pebbles, but cocoa pu- puerbles. Pu- puerbles. <laughs> cocoa puerbles. <laughs> oh my god. A very different feeling, too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Claire says, I find that buddy teas have less of an upfront taste, but hits hard in the chachi department. Yeah, that's what I meant by like gongting kind of tends to scare me a little bit because they kind of melt my face. I don't like the face melting feeling so much. I melt my own face all the time with my own anxiety more often than not. So I don't need something to melt my face. I can melt myself. Thanks. (laughs) I can have my own meltdown. I don't need the tea to give me uh, the melting sensation. So... I like teas a little bit more friendly, warm, comforting, even peppy, but face melting? Yeah, I can do that by myself. (laughs) 
Uh, Clara says we should make a shallow Discord chat and never mention it to him and just talk how much everyone loves him. Just scare him away. I mean, we can just... Yeah, we'll talk about that. There are ways to do that. Um, Amy, this shaguan that I'm drinking is actually one of the teas that has made me appreciate Pu'eris. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you feel that way. I think I've only ever gotten along with one shaguan, <laughs> but that shaguan was amazing. So it's kind of like a... I want to find that level of shaguan again. It was a Hong Kong store, I think 2003... It's not, not the 2005 that I, I see a lot of people drink in, but it's 2003 or earlier. Expensive stuff, and it just tasted like clean rain. And I just, I want to have a pour like that again. It was just amazing. Let's try this uh, grade six show pour. Again, again, I'm getting the word six from the 7562 code on the cake. The six, the third letter or the third number is the grade of the pour. So if it's seven five. There's, I don't think there's a 7512. But if it's 7512, it's grade 1. 7562, it's grade 6. So the higher that number, that third number, the more tippy the material will be, tendencies are. And then the lower it is from 1 to 9, the more leaves and kind of like coarse material there is. The Doesn't mean it's bad. Goes from zero to nine. What's that? The third number goes from 0 to 9. It goes from 0 to 9. And some people say it's the size of the raw leaves, not just the grade. It's kind of like... Which would be, if, if it's just the size true, these would be a little bit different because they're big buds. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you should you should look more into that. I will too. I think I might ask Nanan about that because I feel like formal grading is something they probably would have studied. Different people say different things. As usual. That's the frustration I'm <laughs> running into in, as I'm, I'm going into pour almost like a beginner, right? Like, again, it's not to say that I'm, I'm really good at oolong. I just drink it more. So I know a little bit more about it. I know the gray areas a little bit more, but pour, I'm still almost like, I want to find those exact answers. But, you know, there's none. So let's just go on our jolly way and keep drinking tea. <laughs> <laughs> so grade six is six Larger leaves or just larger leaf size and material. That's very soft. That's very smooth. Yeah. So, from what I've noticed across all teas, the more you go into the larger leaf size, the older leaves, usually the older the leaf, the larger the leaf size, it does show up in the material as being larger just in shape too even if the tea has been cut up. Um, they tend to be more mellow and toned down, less complexity, but more like soothing, like really soothing. This is very soothing. Steven, I like this a lot. I like this. Has anyone had 7562? This is a really famous cake from Dai. Um, has anyone had Dai in general? I think Dai is a really good gateway show pu'er. They're always going to be super clean. They're always going to be super solid. Um, I like Manghai Dai. In my pu'ers, I don't like to be shocked very much. <laughs> I know that sometimes pu'er can like jump out of the bush and go rah, you know, when I'm like, oh my god, again, like I, I handle that by myself already all the time. <laughs> I like pu'er that's a little bit more gentle than that. I have to be in a certain mood to enjoy. Crazy, crazy you know, crazy poor. I do sometimes, but not always. Um, Ian, I love a good face melt. That's what got me into poor. I will send you all my natural face melts if you'd like. That's a brand new sentence as well. Um, just, yeah. I wish I could melt my own face less. But this is good. That's face melting. So I think... I like the taste of it though, so I can't wait to jump back into this. It is getting a little bit darker. I think the buds might be opening up a little bit more. I don't know. Um, TJ says, ever tried a shagwan show? I think so. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> um, Ken, who's at Tea and Whisk, is a big fan of shagwan. Yeah, I just... I've never bought a shagwan cake for myself. It just hasn't occurred to me to want to. But that's why Puer Love is here. We have these kind of... We're humans, right? So we have schema, schemata, that we put things in to kind of save our mental energy. So when I hear Shagwan, I'm like, 
Scary, hard to break, scary, intense. Ken likes it. Tends to be expensive, factory poor. I had one that one time that I liked, but out of those eight, it's all scary, bad, bad, bad. Ken's stuff is scary. You know, there's only one good positive thing. So then my head is like, shagwan equals, I don't like it as much. We have to kind of work against those preconceived kind of mental shortcuts that we make. I say that for myself, because I've been making it this whole time. Like, shagwan scares me and stuff, and Meng Hai I tend to like better. But the, even within that same brand, no brand has all the good, good teas. There's just no way one brand has all good teas, and there's no way that one brand has all bad teas. It's just not possible. Even a stopped clock is right twice a day, right? So I'm trying to, you know, mindfully move towards those teas that challenge me a little bit just to see if I can understand them more. And when I hear Ian say, I love a good face melt, I'm like, my personal initial instinct is like, oh my god, run away as fast as possible. But, and then Amy is like, oh, I like the Xiaguan. And I, I find that me and Amy have very similar tastes in terms of puer. So that to me is another boop. Wow, maybe I could like Shaguan if Amy enjoyed it because she and I have had some similar experiences with Poor. Not the same, but you know, like if Ian says, Hey, Ree, try the Shaguan Poor, I'm like, dude, you're 27 T's in. You know, like, <laughs> I'm a little scared kind of thing. Um, it's interesting to compare experiences like that. So that's soft, smooth, sweet, not as much aftertaste. The thing about the older leaf material, it tends to be a little bit drying on the finish. Do you get that from this, Stephen? A little bit drying on the finish. Um, classically speaking, the dry finish, the dry throat feel is not a good thing if you're like classically evaluating, formally evaluating the tea. I personally don't mind it as long as I'm aware of it or I can connect the dots. Again, my favorite white tea of all time that, you know, Amazing 2012 Wild Mountain White does have a drying feeling on the finish and my teacher hates it because it's just not, it shouldn't have that. Yes, it shouldn't have that, but it's also amazing. So, you know, it's not for everyone, but I really like it. So I'm okay with that drying finish here. It's just very sweet and smooth and it feels good to me. And then this one here going back up a grade to the Teji. It's crazy how much flavor, boldness, complexity, everything happens from the jump from here to here. They don't look very different on initial inspection. Let me just show you like the loose leaf. I did break up these, these cakes so that it's mostly the loose leaf that we're dealing with. So here's just the leaves, right? If you're not thinking about it too much, you'll just be like, one's darker and one's lighter. That could be fermentation levels too, okay? But tendencies are the older leaves will show up as being a little bit darker um, up until a certain point. If they're really, really old, they'll start looking light again. But usually the lighter that overall look is, the more buds there is, you know? So, you know, often you're just not look, you're not paying attention. Poor looks like poor, right? <laughs> At least for me, I'm speaking for myself. But that is a huge jump in taste, even just visually. Like the, the liquor, they don't look very different, but that's a huge jump in complexity I'm getting there from teas of, you know, just a year, year apart. Wow, that's very, very strong compared to that. There's more bitterness, there's more of that bite, more earthiness, more fruitiness. This is the note, flavor note factory right here. You can make lots of different notes come out from this. Wow. And definitely more punchy too. So from here, this is more like relaxing, steady, you know, chill out. This one kind of puts me whoop, right back up, puts my heart back up into my head. Ooh, punchy. Wow. Man. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Wow. Ian, come help me. Take, take the melting from my face and put it on your face. Ooh, that's, 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 that's intense. And then let's go back to this top, top grade one, the Gong Ting. Oh my god, I'm scared. My face is gonna fall off. 
it did infuse a little bit more okay <laughs> it developed like a very structured bitterness there's a lot going on in this tea. I think it just took a little bit of time for it to open up. So that's something I need to think about now is when I'm infusing this kind of tea, it takes even longer than a normal pour to show its 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 colors because I did break up all these cakes, right? So it's not like I'm waiting for the cake piece to break up and open up. It's just the buds. Buds take longer to open up. That's why we like to use boiling water for silver needle to bring out all that complexity, if you don't mind a little bit of that spiciness, pepperiness. There is that spiciness and pepperiness from Silver Needle that I'm attaching to here too. Smoky. It is smoky. That's very different. There's almost no wet earthiness. That's almost like just dried dirt. It's just very different. Steven has some. Yeah. I like this one the most. You like that one the most? Yeah. I'm like, Wow, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. Um, the Tea Enthusiast Scrapbook, how's it going, really, my friend? And uh, Joe from Fish Anywhere? You're late to the stream. Were you out fishing at the stream before you came to this stream? <laughs> I'm just fishing for jokes. <laughs> Am I on the hook for being so lame? Are you gonna cast me out now, Steven? Or did I already lure you in with my tea? <laughs> oh my god. Don't listen to me, I'm tea drunk. Yeah, interesting stuff. Do you not get that bitter finish, Steven, from the teas? It's like a this a this like a bitter, kind of like sharp elegant finish at the end. This is a very confusing tea to me. It tastes like almost nothing in terms of flavor, but the finish is like dry and just the tiniest dry, bit yeah. of bittersweetness, but the dryness is all here. The dryness is not here. So, yeah. Do you really like this tea the most, Stephen? I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Do you the not second like... one gave me a headache. Oh, does it? Yeah? And kind of the second one was... Or sorry, the third one was... Uh, I don't know, boring, uninspiring. I don't like this tea very much. I think it tastes very tasty. It tastes like the poor, poor cocoa pebbles, the poor pourables, co co cocoa pourables. There we go. I had to scroll back to. Got some fishiness from it. This one. And the headache. Really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't get any fishiness from it. I think you're right. There's a tiny bit of fishiness in it. Um, this is why, remember that, oh, God, <laughs> that sticky rice pour from the other day, the one with the most tips, that was probably a touchy grade. The grade of that cake was pretty high. But when you're dealing with materials this complex, you better not mess it up because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. With great power comes great responsibility, you know? So when the people processing with tips mess up, that's why it messes up so bad. You know, you can't really <laughs> just, yeah. You can really mess up those pretty bad. Um, broken tips is what causes a lot of the bitterness in certain teas. It's just, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, welcome, Joe. I'm glad that you're here to help inspire all the puns. <laughs> Jane and Jane, welcome. I know you walked in as I'm already getting tea tipsy, but it's just the, the danger of being poor. I love 2020, you know. Going back to this last one. Do you not like this one, Stephen? It's very thin, so the body oh, of this. No, yeah, it's it's not as interesting. The body's a little bit thinner. It's less complex. I think this is the most simple, straightforward one. So if you just want a nice chauffeur to brew, don't want to think about it too much, don't want your face to get melted, don't want to go on a trip, this is pretty solid, I think. And I can appreciate that. You'll notice it's the only one with the stems floating too. Sorry. <laughs> so the stems are floating in it because it's the only one with stems. The stems tend to float up to the surface. Um, the other ones don't have any stems at all, at least in this batch. So it's a little bit coarser material. Those stems are, you know, reducing the overall bitterness. They're adding a little bit of that soft, very sweet, aromatic thing going on that's not very complex. I like that a lot. So yeah, different, different merits for each. And then let's look at the leaf material too. Let's fish them out. 
This is why the, the, the spoons are so cool, because you can kind of like <laughs> play around and fish out the leaves and look at them. Usually with oolong, it's a little bit easier to see, but when you're dealing with these dark depths, which is a crimson lotus cake. <laughs> look how different the leaf material is. So we saw this in the dry leaf too, but this is a little bit more wet. This is a, little, a little bit more, more light colored. God, they're both wet. <sighs> so tea drunk. So a little bit more light colored, larger buds, and then this one's a little bit less buds, less light in color. And then we'll look at the last one. You'll probably see the stems there. And then here we go. So a little bit more coarse. Let me do the side by side of the Teji and the grade six together. Not very obvious on stream to be honest, but you'll see more stems over here. The most important thing, maybe not the most important thing, another important thing to think about after you've done this kind of side by side is not only is the flavor of the tea different, but the price that you're paying for each of these is going to be very different as well. Um, the Gongting grades tend to be very, very expensive, Teji a little bit less. I'd say most of the stuff in the market you're getting is a blend of the buds and the leaves. It's just more consistent, more balanced, more easy to work with, will go wrong less. So I think Steven's right when he's kind of pulling this fishy flavor out. If you're not careful about the way you ferment, it's going to bring out more of that complexity in not a good way either. So yeah. Anything else, Steven? I'm like trying to like digest all of this. <laughs> Again, this is my first time doing a side-by-side -side of these poor grades. Um, having had cakes of these same grades before, but not doing a side-by-side, -side, it's very illuminating to see just how different the leaf material can affect the blend of the cakes. And when you're dealing with cakes, let's say from Crimson Lotus or from White to Tea, Yunnan Sourcing, anyone else who's doing like show pour pressings or pour pressings of any kind, not all the time will one cake only be gong ting or only taji or or only grade six it's usually going to be a blend of different leaves that they're working with um the the gong ting cakes tend to be kind of kept together because the material is so high you don't want to blend it together with other things but yeah i literally got the sample here the taji sample as a material that could be pressed and or, and or blended with another material to make into a cake as part of a project that I did a couple years back. A hotel wanted a pour program and I they wanted to press their own cakes. So this is one of the materials I got from them to try to, you know, maybe blend into a cake. Of course it didn't because I'm not a pour blender or anything like that. But that's how this came up. Not as a tea that was already pre-existing, but as a, a tea that would have been blended into a cake that was available for them to purchase. So yeah, anything else? See, this is the my limitation with the pu'er is that because I'm so new to it, I'm like, how do I even apply this in terms of things I've tasted before? My flavor library for oolong is so, it's okay. pretty, it's, it's a good library, you know? It's like, I got a lot of science fiction books and then I have like two medieval fantasy books is what I feel like with pu'er. So now I'm trying to put these into context, and I'm like, hmm, I just need to drink more pour, I think. You know, I, I almost want to put these into context with oolong, or with, with, with white tea, and the grades of, you know, I, I'm still understanding them from a white tea, oolong tea perspective. <laughs> Even green tea perspective, you know? Buds tend to be a little bit more soft at the beginning, and then they pop, and then they hit you in the face, like silver needle. When I was, you know, in college trying to get all my papers done, I would drink Silver Needle and it would keep me up as someone who needed to stay up all night because I'd never worked on my papers on time, you know? Silver Needle was the one. And so making that connection here. Let me drink more Puar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, drinking Buddha. We're drinking some Puar. We did a side by side of three different show Puars. Uh, Gong Ting, Teji, and a grade 6 from a Dai cake. So different levels of leaf material, different levels of cost, different prettiness levels. The Gong Ting is very pretty, the golden buds. 
So if you see, you know, your cakes, even if it doesn't have the label, try to look at the leaf material a little bit, see what the composition is, um, and then see if you can connect these notes that I've gotten from my experiment, or hopefully you guys will do your own side-by-side -side too um, of these kinds of poor grades. Once you've done this side-by-side, -side, this is not how you drink tea every day, right? So you take this information, it's stuff that you've like kind of isolated, and then you apply it when you drink tea. So when I drink next time a gong ting that's different or the same as this, I'm using this as a frame of reference, seeing where that new gong ting fits within my flavor library. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't feel my face. I'm sorry. I just, wow. Let's see. Um, Henrique says, shoot, I was stuck in a meeting. You guys should have been meeting with us. Yeah. Did you tell your meeting friends that they need to be part of Poor Love 2022? <laughs> That's the default thing. I'm just... Did you tell them about Poor Love, Henrique? Um, Henrique says, are they all from the same year or region, Re? Uh, this one's 2010, these both are from 2011. Uh, they're not from the same region. I think these two are Menghai, and this one is Xingyang. Um, so these two are more similar to each other. This one is a different region. Um, overall though, I feel like it's a pretty good comparison. It's not vastly different leaf materials, we are looking more at the leaves themselves. The kind of the, the, the outlay here is probably the Xingyang um, because the buds are a lot larger than typical Gongting. Yeah. Man, once poor love is done, I'll be done with doing lives where I just get so tipsy on stream. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah. So, tomorrow, I hope you guys join us for an interview with my friend Nan Nan Yan. I'm gonna ask her about these grades if we can. Anything that you'd like to ask someone who grew up around Puer in Yunnan, who formerly studied Puer in Yunnan, let me know on Instagram DMs or on the Discord so we can kind of talk and stuff about what's going on. Um, she's incredible. She has a lot of perspective on Puer, but she also drinks other teas, which I really, you know, I, I really appreciate that she's from there and she loves Puer. I asked her, is Puer your favorite? She's like, of course, the first time I... I asked her that question. I'm from Yunnan. And I'm really excited to see what she has to say. Yeah. Oh, well, Shiloh's here, so we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Clara said, it's not a poor stream unless Ree's totally gone by the end. You know, out of all the poor streams we've done so far, this is the one I'm the most gone during. I'm not sure if it's possible to tell. I feel like my eyes are getting smaller and smaller as the stream is going on. Can you tell, Steven? I'm just like fading, you know, and I'm trying to like, I'm trying to put this in my flavor library, but like I'm all tipsy, so like my flavor library is all over the place, and maybe that's why my poor library isn't good, because I've drunk a lot of poor, but half the time I'm like, my face is melting, I don't want to put that book in my library, you know, <laughs> like, how can I, how can I categorize this when I can't feel my face? With oolong, I can feel my face. With poor, sometimes I can't feel my face, can't feel my hands. Trying my best to just not pass out. So, which one do you think it was? Was it this one? I feel like it was this one. The one in the middle. This is a very potent pour. This one's very... It's it's face melting, but it's a little cleaner than that. This one, I like the taste of it, but it's a little bit bitter, potent, intense. The stuff that typically gets me tea drunk. This is just very calm for me. So maybe it's this one. Steven detected a fishy aroma from it that I didn't. I was too busy like tasting it and like enjoying the, the cocoa pour bubbles thing going on. It's very tasty, but just because it's tasty. Let's check it one more time. Let's see if I get worse. <laughs> it's getting worse. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. We will try our best to stay sober tomorrow. I think this will probably be the most tipsy I'll be on stream. Amy, I'm glad you can tell. Thanks for confirming. You know, yeah, this is why I never look at my streams again. My eyes are really tiny. Uh, yeah. Um, Claire, oolong is about taste. Pour is about feeling to me. You need to find the oolong that makes you feel stuff too. You can float away in the clouds of oolong. There's so many oolongs. It's just that oolong people don't tell you because they're too busy drinking the oolong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drunk. Let's go. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the interview with Nan Nan. <laughs> you did not hear that. It's poor love, guys. Poor little, little flag. <laughs>
<laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>